Let's begin this morning talking about the role of faith in some of the biggest headlines of the year. We all remember Pope's historic trips this year. You had all the religious rhetoric surrounding the 2016 presidential race and, of course, what we're dealing with in terms of terror. All right, let's discuss with a special group, Christine Lee, the vicar of All Angels Church, Father John Devaney, host of Sirius XM's Catholic Channel, and McKay Coppins. He's not clergy. No, he's a senior <laughs> political writer for BuzzFeed. It's great to have all three of you here. Merry Christmas or whatever applies to you. All right, so let's look at the best and the worst. Christine, I'll start with you. When you think about faith, best manifestation of it this year. I think definitely Pope Francis's visit. You give the nod to the big man out of Rome, do you? I do. Why? Well, I think there's something about Pope Francis, and he said this himself, that when he looks at people, he sees the image and likeness of God in them, and that gives them value and dignity. So whether he's talking to President Obama, whether he's talking to a homeless person, whether he's addressing Congress or meeting with Kim Davis, he sees each person as made in the image of God, mm -hmm. and, he, and he treats them as such. And that's so out of, out of the ordinary in our very politicized world. The Kim Davis, I like how you tucked that in there, mm -hmm. wanted to bring a little bit of controversy to the Pope's trip because he had had struck this almost ecumenical, almost secular vibe where, boy, he's just doing the right thing, doesn't matter what you believe. And then there was that meeting with Kim Davis, which started to play into the little inside politics. How'd you see it? Well, yeah, I mean, the Pope has been interesting in the way he's kind of scrambled the politics of, in, in this country. But I think the visit with Kim Davis was uh, a, a nod toward the fact that the Catholic Church cares a lot about the issue of religious liberty. Kim Davis in particular, though, has been a very controversial figure because she's become almost immediately was kind of co-opted as an icon of the religious right and the Republicans. Uh, you saw candidates like Mike Huckabee and Ted Cruz uh, aggressively champion her and almost turn her into a stump speech line, right? Mm. Uh, but, but I think that the issue of religious liberty, while this was a very controversial flashpoint, continues to feed into the 2016 race and will through next year. Mm. Uh, and I think that there are also signs of, of real compromise that are to be had if people are willing to come together in kind of good faith and, and work it out. It was a real flip mm -hmm. on the notion of religious liberty. We had been playing with it in terms of inclusion. Right. This wound up being about essentially the right to exclude. Kim yes. Davis, of course, the Kentucky clerk. You remember she didn't want to deal with gay marriage. So, Father, that brings us to you. The worst manifestation of faith. What do you see out there where you're like, wow, this is not good, not good for the world of faith? Sure, any kind of fundamentalism. Uh, mm. It's clear. Obviously, I mean, what we've seen since the stage was June 2014 now, the threat of ISIS. But Pope Francis talked about this not too long ago. Any kind of fundamentalism uh, in the name of God, especially with murder, is blasphemous. Your brothers and sisters, some of them within the Christian faith, yes. Catholic faith, do not like to hear that. They say the Muslims are different. They're different than us. Christians don't do that. What do you tell people? We're all people of goodwill, and we're all people who are children of God. I mean, that's what we truly believe if we believe in the one God who created us all, who got the whole thing going, so to speak. And as we view him as a merciful father, that's the big thing the Catholic Church is in right now, the extraordinary jubilee year of mercy. And, uh, for example, uh, you know, we have... Uh, Christians in the Middle East who are finding it a place where they can't live necessarily mm -hmm. anymore. So, but we have to look at everybody as children of God. Mm. But Christine, you know we were dealing with this as a culture right now. Yeah. Uh, whether it's President Obama and what he decides to call terror, not saying the word Islamist or Islamism or Islamic. Yeah. What do you tell people when they say, but Christians don't run around killing people in the name of Christianity the mm -hmm. way Muslims do. They're different. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say the primary thing is I always go back to Alexander Solzhenitsyn's great quote about how he says, the line between good and evil doesn't run through religions. It doesn't run through, it doesn't run between religions or between nation states, but through every single human heart. And I think that there can be a lack of humility on the part of Christians when we say, well, there's a good us and a bad them. And to me, that feels like a lack of self the reality of sin in our own hearts and that it's not a Muslim or a Christian thing it's a human thing um, and so I, I feel like with that there is some under there should be some kind of understanding um, and a graciousness towards each other knowing that we're all kind of just trying to do the best that we can high bar when people deal mm -hmm. with fear and anxiety and terror what do you think needs to happen in terms of bridging this gap of understanding what is about faith versus what is simply a perversion of faith well, I think that, uh, you know, and, and no matter what faith you come from, you can find 
historic, historical examples of uh, your faith being perverted and, and turned evil, right? This was a point that President Obama once made, and be, it became very controversial, hearkening back to the Crusades. Now, in our time, obviously, uh, pe m Muslim people of faith are dealing with this hateful ideology that's taken roots in some p parts of their community. But I think that what, one thing that can happen that hopefully would, would bring people together is if Christians and, and people of all faiths were able to reach out to, to Muslim people. I think we've actually seen a, an interesting example of that in Texas with the Syrian refugee crisis, where you saw a lot of Christian religi uh, religious organizations uh, defy the conservative politicians in their state and take Syrian refugees in and say that we want to help these people regardless of what the, uh, the kind of the pulpit pounders and the conservative uh, political world are saying. We, we want to help these people, and, and they cite religious liberty as their, their right to do it. I think that uh, the more we see that, we see religious organizations, whether they're conservative or liberal or in the middle, uh, reach out to, to Muslims, I think that that will, uh, that will help to bridge the gap. Christine mm -hmm. McKay, Father John, thank you very much. A Merry Christmas thank to you. you both. Thank you. You too. Merry Christmas. I, I celebrate. <laughs> I was treating you as a reporter. I was trying to give you a 